afternoon. I'm going to um, not give exactly the presentation that's in your material. I took a look at it, decided that uh, I was going to be done in 20 minutes, and I looked at the time slot, and it was an hour. I figured I'd better add some information to it. Uh, we have, uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, obviously software, the strategic importance of it, and a uh, major uh, activity that is t taking place right now in terms of bringing all the software other than the operating systems and network software together, integrated, and make sure that all the pieces work together very well. The um, software effort to, uh, to bring all that about is done under the umbrella of NAS, and you've heard of NAS, I'm sure. Uh, you will quickly discover that there is uh, current NAS and then there is extended NAS. We've taken NAS of, in terms of what it stands for, which is uh, portability, interoperability of applications, distributed operations, and we're applying those attributes to uh, all layered software that we provide at digital. And uh, what we've taken is that uh, very good beginning, and we're expanding that uh, message across pretty much all of our layered software. And I want to talk about that, because it is fairly significant. The uh, various software products and the various groups that are building software <coughs> are now under one umbrella as of last um, September or so. I think the announcement came out in December. It's under David Stone, who's the vice president of this group, which we call the TNSG for the new software group. Couldn't think of a better name. And it is a good name. We have database systems in there, transaction processing, the software development technologies, the tools on the case, the office systems and applications engineering, something we refer to as network operating system software. These are all the uh, operating system-like services that typically sit on top of the operating systems. If we are to port all of our software, not only to Ultrix and VMS, but also to OS2, MS-DOS, and other strategic Unix, plat Unix platforms, there is a set of basic services that are necessary in order to allow that uh, porting of software to occur. DCE, RPC, and so forth are examples of that kind of a software. We refer to that as network operating system software. It's software that sits on top of the various platforms in the, in the uh, network. Secure systems is part of, of this organization. And these are pretty much uh, existing groups from before that are now integrated. We have something called the CALS program office. CALS being computer acquisition and logistics and support. It's a DOD program. It's very significant because it goes way beyond DOD and the aerospace industry. Really what happened was that uh, DOD decided no more paper. We're going to get everything online. That's number one. Number two, we're going to integrate, interoperate between all the primary contractors to DOD and secondary. We're going to be able to exchange information, obviously, across heterogeneous systems. I'm told that this is one of the consequences of the realization that uh, one of the ships that was recently built needed all the technical documentation to go along with it so you can maintain it while it's at sea. The technical documentation was so heavy that it would affect the performance of the ship. It had to be included as part of the ballast of the ship. <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, CAL started. Now, CAL uh, obviously started with um, the air some of the airspace companies in particular. Now, those companies are turning around to uh, look for their future in terms of the commercial business. If you look at McDonnell, Douglas, and Boeing, an increasing amount is going to be done on the commercial side. And they obviously want to do business the same way on the commercial side as they do on the defense side. It's also a good goal. There are numerous companies, automobile companies in Europe, for example, that are adopting the CALS program. It's a set of standards that very much fits into our uh, NAS strategy. David Stone brought with him international engineering from Europe as part of the organization. There will be no more excuse in the future not to have internationalized products. The standards group and activities are part of this organization. 
and the uh, software business practices. We are pursuing this to, uh, and David Stone's goal is to make this a software company within digital. Um, that goes beyond being a systems company where you would quite often take into account leveraging hardware. This indeed is going to make sure that we run software as a company and porting our software to other hardware platforms, not digital platforms, is one of the consequences of such an approach. We have a mission to be recognized as the best provider of quality software for integrated information systems to delight customers worldwide. Customer satisfaction is an admirable goal. The Europeans, the digital Europe group, had decided that delighting the customers was more of a positive way to state a better customer satisfaction. So David Stone, who had been in uh, Geneva for 16 years, brought that message with him and has uh, integrated in with our group. And it, uh, it does more proactively address what you do for the customers than maybe customer satisfaction does. Our vision is uh, one that uh, we believe is going to happen where, uh, for example, the, the CALS part is just an example of what's happening here. We are going to interconnect, we the industry, are going to interconnect all these heterogeneous systems. We're going to pass information between the systems, share information as opposed to just bits. And we'll get to the point where uh, you'll be exchanging information as easily between corporations, departments and corporations, as you do today in the best corporations between departments. So an S, Network Application Support, is what the acronym stands for. And what is it? Well, it's our model. Oh, as you will see, there are products and there's architecture that's associated with this for application integration in the distributed multi-vendor environment. Some keywords here are distributed. We are definitely looking at taking the next major step in making sure that we maintain our lead in distributed processing. With distribution and multi-vendor comes interoperability. We have done certainly more than our competitor IBM has done in terms of multi-vendor interoperability. We still have a ways to go in terms of making sure that uh, we have read-write, for example, interoperability on the database level. We only have read today. And we're hard at work to make sure that that happens. I think one of the uh, key things that we are seeing from some of the larger customers today is the uh, being able to interoperate with existing systems. A lot of our customers today have obviously information systems, computer systems that have grown up <coughs> in various places in the corporations, very depart various departments and uh, divisions. They are sometimes referred to as legacy systems. There's a lot of information there, a lot of applications. And to be able to integrate that into a new integrated system that would make sure that we can share information across all those nodes is uh, what we're going to try to do, one of the things we're going to try to do with NAS. As a matter of fact, one of the definitions of an open system is one that you do with a customer, you design it with a customer, obviously it could have Altrix or Unix in it, could be standards of hearing, but it's open in the sense that it allows you to integrate the existing system in with that overall customer open system. A heavy emphasis on standards because that will make the job easier in terms of meeting the goals of distribution and interoperation. We do have a, um, several pictures and I'm going to show you the first one of uh, what we call the abstract layer model. And that shows that the uh, NAS infrastructure sits between the applications on top and the base platforms underneath it. The, um, sometimes this is referred to as uh, middleware. There are two major parts to it that I will identify la later. There's a set of NAS services, each of which is a capability that's implemented for the applications. We also have some tools 
workbenches, and a whole slew of uh, application program interfaces, so-called APIs. We have uh, Ultrix, which is an open um, operating system today. We have open VMS coming to make VMS more open. NAS is our open advantage that will sit on top of Ultrix and VMS and the other uh, industry significant operating systems. And NAS will really be the thing that's going to make digital systems truly open. That's our goal. If you talk about open, there's a set of terminologies associated with that that we feel are uh, significant. One is the integration the interoperability between applications and data. For an application on one platform to be able to communicate with an application on another platform is part of op being open. The portability of applications being able to be executed and ported to multiple platforms is an aspect of open. And the connectivity, obviously, with the, the networking that we have of various heterogeneous nodes being able to communicate. I think we, uh, I would say that we are leaders in two of these three today in the open space, certainly in the networking area with OSI, uh, improvements to um, DECnet, TCP IP, SNA gateways and so forth. We have a good storage to tell on connectivity. I think on the interoperability, we have a good storage to tell. Uh, the part where we fall apart is the portability and quite often we are accused of not being open, I believe, because of missing capabilities in the portability space. A few more words about portability and interoperability. If you look at history in terms of where we're going to end up, and by the way, the, the point of this slide is to try to address the, uh, <coughs> the thing we hear today, that if you're Unix, you're open. Now, if the customer says, I want an open system, and I define it to be Unix. Obviously, that's, we don't undefine that. We support that. We, we agree with the customer that that's being open. Some customers may say that open is um, standards and POSIX, in which case we would have a good shot maybe with an open VMS system to make the sale. But where is open and, port and portability and interoperability really heading? Well, if you look in, uh, back in the 60s, when computing got started, we typically would buy one operating system from one vendor, and there would be one hardware system that would support that. that would, that's kind of where in the early 60s. In the middle 60s, uh, in particular with the IBM 360, we got the uh, multiple hardware platforms for the same operating system from one vendor. So we got the aspect of scaling happen. You could buy a small system or a mid-size or a larger system. Today, we have the situation where we could buy, we rely on one operating system, and that allows us to buy systems from many vendors and on many different platforms. But as you know, some people were shaking when I, uh, shaking their heads when I said that Unix need not be the same thing as open system. As you know, we get very little integration, specifically with legacy systems. It's very difficult to take a Unix system today and tie it into your existing MVS uh, system or VMS system. We believe that the, the next step is one where we will not care what the operating system is underneath it, because we will standardize it at a level higher than the operating system. We'll standardize it at the XPG3 level of XOpen. We we'll standardize it at the application environment specification by OSF1. We will be at the level of end user interfaces and higher level APIs, where the, the actual portability and interoperability will, will be. Our implementation strategy for NAS is one where, before I get into that, my, my perception of where we are at today, and, and you may or may not agree with that, is that we've had significant developments of software, layered software within digital. If you look at the VMS site, to, for example, and the software has been fairly well integrated between, within the existing organizations. You have the database software that seems to work pretty well together. You have SDT software. You have transaction processing software. And where we haven't done really a good job is in terms of 
integrating between those organizations. There's been issues, I know, of CDD plus versus RDB, for example. And there's been some other issues. One of the things we're trying to do here with NAS is really to address it at a different level. Instead of trying to look at the bigger blobs of software and make them work together, we're dissecting all the software without redoing or undoing it necessarily into a set of services. So SQL is one service. RPC is another service, and I will show you those. And after you get all those services in place, you make sure that they work together and play together. And then you're just going to discover that instead of having 14 services as we have today in today's NAS, we're probably going to end up with 140, 200 services. Then the thing becomes too complex. And then we add things on top of that to add the simplicity, what we call frameworks and, and workbenches, which I'll show you later, where you bring back the, the bigger blobs of software again in terms of integrated environments. What we're trying to do here is to make it all work on a set of services is going to be very large because of the comprehensive nature of it, but where they all work together and not have this problem of, of mismatching software components anymore. To get, that done, to get that done, one of the first things we had to do is to very quickly arrive at an, an architecture model for all the software within David Stone's organization. And we have that architecture overview now ready to be rolled out in the next month or two. And we're going to be informing as many people as we can get our hands on in terms of what that architectural overview are. Then we develop the application services which implement that and we're going to, instead of them or most of them, will be identified for multi-vendor operations so we have a truly portable system. We're addressing the easy purchase, delivery and installation of NAS services. If you have 150, 200 services, we can't put the burden of installation on the users so we're obviously going to package that up and hopefully five or less NAS packages of services. And then we'll provide the guidelines for how to use those. So, as I said, we've taken existing NAS and we're expanding on that. And we're expanding on it in three different directions. The functionality, the platforms, and the standards. We're driving and uh, to increase the compliance and the increasing number of standards. We're also one of the strongest companies that are driving the new standards. Obviously adding an, an not a lot of new functions and services to the existing ones today. And uh, going uh, strong on the multi-vendor platforms. If I take a look at the multi-vendor platforms, the platforms we're looking at include these. VMS Ultrix, Go Unix, OS2, VM, MS-DOS, Mac, various others. It is now clear to us, and I didn't even update the slide, that a great number of these NAS services are going to have to go on MBS in order to have the right integration interoperable network that includes legacy systems that are based on MBS. And we'll be, we have made the strategic decision we're going to do it. We're, hard at look right now in terms of what services are going to be there in order to satisfy the, uh, the customers that we have, the prospects that we have. I said we have a strong uh, reliance on standards. This is a picture that kind of depicts where standards <laughs> have been, are today, and where they are going. Back in the uh, 60s when we were working on COBOL and Fortran standardization. I think the main reason for standards back then were productivity. We had just gotten out of the uh, assembly language area into third generation languages and we wanted some additional features in those compilers and the emphasis very quickly were on productivity. As we get into the 70s, we started to talk about connectivity, the OSI effort for networking became started in that, uh, that time frame. That started the, uh, the road up the, <coughs> the level, the chain here of going to portability, not only of applications, which is where we are at today, but also to data, which we are also doing t today. And I would say for the 90s, we're going to the portability of people, in particular to the graphical un user interfaces, to the various system management, 
capabilities that need to be standardized. And obviously, we have to have some kind of standard for system management if anybody is going to be able to manage a network of heterogeneous systems. As a matter of fact, if you look at the distributed database problem today, the, to really have a solution to it, the big problem is in the area of system management as opposed to implementing distributed SQL features and distributed optimizations. Our approach to standards is a cycle. We conform to them, and the two driving ones today for our space, among others, is the OSF application environment specification and the XOpen uh, XPG3. <coughs> our new attitude in our group is that as quickly as possible, we will try to create the richest stream of new functionality. We're going to constantly worry about value added and being first with the new capabilities that should sit on top of the standard. So we are addressing our productivity, for example, to make sure that we can have a very quick time to market for these kind of capabilities. And we're going to push that very hard. But at the same time, we're going to try to push those into the standards, and in particular through OSF and other, cap other organizations, we will tr try very hard to push our capabilities into standards. In terms of OSF, we are the major provider of technology to OSF today. Our DC is one of the latest uh, technologies that we have uh, moved into to OSF and that you will see on multiple implementations. But we're going to drive that circle very, very hard. I said that we're going to increase the functionality of our deliverables. This is where we're at today on NAS software. I can't remember if those are 13 or 14 services that pretty much exist today either through digital or through, th through uh, third parties. And I think you have this slide in your... If you compare ourselves with SAA, which some people will do, we do quite well. We have uh, now 1,200 NAS-based applications from third parties. I can't remember the last number of, from IBM, but it was less than 100 when I heard. We include significant services such as compound documents, CDI, applications control, messaging into our NAS strategy, obviously include Unix. And the difference between, one of the main differences between IBM's SAA and our NAS is that SAA integrates IBM systems, NAS integrates industry significant systems. We are multi-vendor, they are not. Although I'm not sure how long we're going to be able to keep that lead because I'm reading in various articles and you might too now where various product managers from IBM are quoted as, as saying that they're going to go multi-vendors also, so I'm sure it's coming. Quite a bit of progress on a number of vendors and the shipping applications in one year just on those few services, but significant services. Now from 200 to 650 vendors, and from 150 to 1,200 applications. Let me now get into some of the architectural aspects. And I'll end up with some pictures for you so you can get an idea of what uh, this architecture is going to look like. There are some uh, principles involved, some of the things that are especially important to us. Heterogeneous multi-vendor operations, I mentioned that earlier. This is one area where openness and standards come in, and we're obviously talking about implementation of multiple platforms. <coughs> While I'm at that, uh, I'm not sure that this is approved yet, but it's close to being approved is that uh, there's a new uh, advertising campaign that um, I think will drive most of the advertising for some time than digital that uh, has as a title nice NAS, the open advantage. And I think most of our advertisement, I'm told from now on, will address that um, headline or that slogan. Distributed operation, I said we have leadership up to now. It, we have to keep pushing on that very hard to make sure that we stay in the lead on distributed operations. We intend to do that. Uh, DCE is one area that uh, we're pushing hard on. 
the uh, transparent distributed database services is another area. Portability. Interoperability with a consistent user interface, common data representations. Flexibility, also key to being open. We think one of the main uh, benefits of NIS is the protection investment, investment protection. Not to forget about ease of use and stability and quality. And those are the key pervasive attributes that uh, drive everything that we're doing in NAS today. If we take a look at the uh, architecture overview, we have on the bottom the various uh, platforms, operating systems, networking, and hardware. Heterogeneous platforms, not only are digital. At the very highest level, you have the applications. The applications, typically, and the platforms are not part of what we would refer to as NAS. You have the system interfaces from NAS to those platforms. There's a set of code, software, obviously, there. There is the uh, application programming interfaces to NAS. And in between, we have a whole slew of services that represent all the capability and more that we today are delivering in our layered software. One thing to look at this is that what we've, what we've decided is that all the significant software, layered software that we have today, we're going to make, if it's strategic, we're going to make it portable. We're going to put it on multiple platforms. We're obviously looking at individual products to see if they're strategic or not, such as in the TP space, you have DEC Intact, you have ACMS. ACMS obviously is strategic. DEC Intact, we don't know. We're looking at that. <coughs> but as soon as it's strategic, it fits in as one of the services on the NIS architecture. Now, we group the services differently from uh, the way we have grouped products today. We have the presentation services that deals with delivering the, uh, presenting, for example, information to the applications. Computation services, and I have examples of these if you want to take a look at them. <coughs> information services include all the database uh, services, for example, and some of the uh, AIM stuff. Management services, control services, and communication services. We've drawn a line, it's straight here, but it's really wavy between what we refer to as base services and extended services. Base service can be thought of more of as, a, as a commodity service. It, these are capabilities that you sooner or later would expect to migrate down into the operating systems. RPC is a base service today. Eventually, we would envision that to go into the basic operating system service. Two-phase commit is a basic service that you would make eventually envision going down into the operating system services. The extended services is where we would expect to make our money. That's our value added services. And obviously over time, some of the extended services would migrate down into base services and so forth. Not all of them, but many of them would. For the first month or two when we were doing our architecture overview where you try to capture all the software we're doing, create an architecture overview around that so that all the work from now on can be in support of that architecture, was a layered model. It was kind of like what I showed you earlier in terms of that abstract NAS, abstract layer model. We had a very difficult time working with layers. Once we made the breakthrough on instead of having layers of having columns of services, the job became a lot easier to do and also to understand. This NAS software works on a set of information system platforms. And we have, and you will see our uh, information to be categorized here in three areas. 
we said that yes, there are clients, yes, there are servers, and a client-server computing model is one that we will be very strong in. Probably we are today and will become even increasingly stronger. But there's also something called a host. And we will be talking about NAS with respect to those three entities, hosts, servers, and clients. A host typically will be an existing system, mainframe type, whether it's a Unisys system or IBM or even a digital system. There's definitely applications there. There's quite often data. And there is a part of NAS that needs to go there in order to support the interoperability of that, those applications and the data with the rest of the uh, networked systems. We could have multiple servers, one server per NAS service, or we could have a server, obviously, that has a lot of NAS services on it. That's depending upon how we want to package those. And on the desktop, you'd find, obviously, applications, NAS <coughs> system interface to the operating system on the network, and APIs to get to that NAS service. So the only point, the point with this slide is that there will be three entities that when you see NAS documentation in the future, you will see those three entities being addressed. I've used the word API a lot. We all know, I think, what it is, but uh, it's important to recognize that for each API, there's more to it than a uh, service specification or language specification. There's also a context in which that occurred, which is an environment specification. So the API is used by an either an application or a tool to get to specific service and a, plat and a platform underneath that. Each of these APIs will be have three parts of that description. The language, what the service is, and what the environment is, the context that it can be used. The NAS APIs, vis-a-vis -vis some of the other things that I mentioned, fit as we depicted on this particular picture. If you start on the, uh, the bottom on the platform, OSF1, Nultrix, Unix, VMS, the first one on top of that would be the POSIX interface to, for example, VMS. They have open VMS. XOpens, XPG3, XPG3 fits around POSIX. More capabilities, more services than POSIX but not as many as OSF's application environment specification, which is a heavy, heavy uh, standardization effort that's currently taking place. OSF's AES is one step toward making sure that we can become more independent of the particular operating system that sits underneath. And our NAS fits around OSF's application environment specification. As I said earlier, we're driving hard for capabilities for functions value added that sits on outside the standards. And in many of those, we will drive to make sure that they eventually become included in some kind of a standard. <coughs> One of the problems with this picture is that uh, obviously in order to have the kind of services that applications need in order to do mission critical applications or executive uh, support systems or what have you, you need a set of services that's very comprehensive. And as I said earlier, I don't know what the eventual number of services are going to be, but it'll be somewhere around 150 to 200 is a good guess today. And we'll grow from there. Each one with an API, or most of them with an API. And that, that makes it kind of difficult to really use for many third parties and application writers. So we need to do some way of simplifying that without losing that kind of comprehensiveness. <coughs> and there are two things we're doing with that. We introduced th something called frameworks. And the framework is a independent packaging of some of the so software that makes up a specific capability that a user is used to talking about or that we want to deliver. There are two examples here. One is a DCA framework, and one is a CDA framework, it says on the bottom here. And I depicted those with uh, the various dashed lines. 
you take a look at CDA framework, for example, there's a tool, or maybe a set of tools associated with, with that CDA framework, and there are some services out of each of those columns of services. And we envision packaging that, that framework together, documenting it, presenting it to our users as one entity representing CDA. And the same thing would happen with something called DCE, for example. It could be one deliverable, one way to inform customers about it. But here is, we're getting back to the grouping of software that I was talking about earlier, but it's being done from an existing set of services that are guaranteed to work together in this architecture. So it's, it's kind of starting from a different place where we would have started it had we done this about a year ago. We also have something called workbenches and veneers. If you take a uh, specific application domain, for example, where there are a set of applications in a certain domain such as uh, cohesion, for example, would be an example of a workbench. The set of applications that would be built using cohesion. You have the application sitting on top of the workbench, which consists of a set of tools, and it has one API veneer in it. And what we've done for, let's, say, let's take Cohesion or DECTP, is that we've taken the multiple APIs that would support <coughs> that specific area, and we've defined it together into a veneer, into one entity, new API, if you like. It's different from the, from the very basic ones in the services here, but it's been grouped together in order to make it easier to describe, easier for a TP application developer, for example, if they want to use DEC TP to use. So we envision using veneers to make groupings of APIs and to group software together and tools together in order to present something as, for example, cohesion, DEC TP, information network, some of the other groupings that you've heard of uh, before. For the purpose of fast time to market, we've shown that we, can, we would allow for certain services to directly support a veneer before it actually is integrated into the rest of the NAS services. One of the things that uh, David Stone has done is a major, major assault on something called the face review process. We are really addressing the productivity of our organization. He has a goal to have 12 month time to revenue for many of the capabilities that we're doing right now. If you look at, for example, the face review process the way it is today, it has now become somewhat of a block that many of us hide behind. Quite often takes a minimum of nine months even for an empty product to get delivered. And that, uh, that will change significantly. We have now something called the New Information Task Force, which direct, directly addresses that. You, if you know concurrent engineering from the Cal space, for example, you recognize some of the similarities with concurrent engineering, where instead of a serial process, a lot of concurrent uh, processes will take place. So this is uh, one way to get something very quickly out without having to wait for it to be necessarily integrated into the perfectness of the architecture. This one you won't see, most probably, but it identifies some of the services that fall into the base services. And instead of trying to squint your eyes, I'm very quickly going to go through some slides that identify <coughs> what goes into some of them. I got, uh, what, 15 minutes left? Before I continue, any questions so far? Yes? Earlier when Rob was giving his presentation, he brought up deck inspect, deck SRF, deck alert, and all these fun little products that are coming. One of the issues that a lot of people felt about it, their chance to be exposed to it and the supportability of it, would have us to have to deal with supporting the customer and dealing with the customer. In your architecture, have you looked at the supportability of any of what you're doing, the direction you're moving, when you're getting into the central environment? 
Yeah, we, I can't speak to it myself, but that's one of the, uh, the big concerns that we have is the supportability of it. I mean, an uh, analogy was given that the cars of 15 years ago didn't change from altitude. You didn't have to, you know, you had to worry about the idle adjustments and carburation. The cars today do that for you. The side effects is the cars are much more complicated. Yeah. You to work with so. One of the thinkings we have right now is that what would be our deliverables of, of NAS? And uh, we would have, my goal is three NAS packages that are include all the services. No more. Maybe we'll go to four or five, but not, not 20 or not 30. Beyond those three NAS packages, you would, get, you would see the workbenches and the frameworks. You would see DECDP. <coughs> for example, as a workbench. But included in that are deck forms, ACMS, RDB. So by definition, it's a integrated set of software. And I don't know how many frameworks and workbenches we would have, but <coughs> maybe we would have a dozen. So we're looking at, and I'm just making this up now, my personal opinion may not have anything to do with reality, but my, uh, my thinking is we would have what, 15, 20 software entities out of this organization. And today, I don't know how many hundreds of software packages we have. And so the, one of the discussions is, can you get away from not having point products? And we may not be able to get away from having an a la carte offering a point product. But we're definitely going to push that in the background. You, you, the customer, are really going to have to try hard to find that, because our offering will be primarily these larger integrated software entities. Now with that comes, and what we're really looking at is the system engineering, the system integration aspect of that. So if we have three NAS service packages, we're going to pay attention to making sure that those work together unlike we have done anything before. And the integration and the testing and this, the system engineering of that is going to be very strong. We can do it for three packages. We can't do it for 500. We would do categorization of uh, performance, all these other things that we don't do today. And that's our goal to provide that with them. Uh, and we can do it with fewer things. We can't do it the way we organize today. So the push is really to get us, and we are one quarter of the engineering group at Digital today. So there are thousands of programmers here to really focus down to fewer deliverables so we can do those things that we don't do today. Yes? your own product, the quality goes up quite a bit. The best way to do that is to make them so good that internal people want to use them. We had quite a bit of uh, success with IMNT in terms of, in the last few years, really stepping up to digital products, even doing field testing. Um, one of the things that uh, the new information task force says vis-a-vis -vis field testing, for example, is that we should write the manual first before the product. And then we field test that with the uh, customers or work with the customers to see if they have the right capabilities. Then we should ought to have prototypes where applicable. And even the prototypes ought to be in customer situations. This TQM, Total Quality Management, says that you should live with the customer. You shouldn't just get the requirements. And we will try our damnedest to have our, our population live with customers so we know that the product is evolved from a customer situation as opposed to some general call for requirements once a year. Um, so the whole area of field tests is being really looked at from the standpoint of starting with the, the manual that came out before the product and with prototypes and so forth. But your comment is very good, and we will make sure we have an internal use field test also.
We'll do a quick glance on some of the services. Uh, we had the various columns. One of the columns was the presentation services. This is where you would find X windows, portable graphical user interface services, form services, character cell services, multimedia, and various other user services. We we'll go in this column. The computation <coughs> services was the next one over, going left to right. Includes conversions, distributed time, exception handling. Certain services that internationalization needs, where there's two aspects to internationalization. One is where every product needs to be internationalizable or ready to be internationalized. The other one is to have a set of services to support uh, multi-byte characters, for example, that uh, Japanese and the Chinese need and the conversions between those two. So those kind of services that would support internationalization fall in this computation area. Portable math services, memory management, sort services. I don't expect you to take notes. You don't have these. You will be getting information soon about this. Uh, one of the drives we have is to get the information out to everybody so that you know where we, what we have and where we're going. Um, and we are working on that pretty hard, so don't take the notes necessarily. <laughs> Information services. The, uh, the repository is to the 90s of so what databases were to the 80s. And to get one logical repository together is very high on our mind right now. We are in the dictionary areas and repository areas. We have certain leaderships, but we're not there yet. CDD Plus is good for the case area. It's a, it's a dictionary becoming a repository. But you have also repositories in other application domains, such as in the manufacturing space. You have the um, PDAS Express interface to a, a database sitting underneath it. That's also an example of a repository. One of the top, no, I should say the top technical architectural action item that we have right now is to get a definition of what a repository is together. Not one that's a union of the existing capabilities that we have, but what is a repository? And nobody out there today, as far as we see, has a good definition for it. And we look around at the large customers, and I'm meeting with Boeing tomorrow, and their big problem for the 90s architecture of their system is they want a repository that does these things. But we, have all, we are wrestling with it. It's the problem right now in terms of getting that definition in place. Now, we believe we have a lot of good software that will enable that to, to be ex implemented very quickly, distributed databases and so forth. Yes? Uh, object that, that, that's kind of like the leading edge of technology. You know, would you should be able to extract from uh, your depository an object rather than data, and you shouldn't care what you should just know that it is an object. Is that? Yes, that's very important. Object-oriented uh, data model is one part of the repository. We have gone yeah, out. Are pushing hard on that, or is that? Yeah. Great. We've gone out and we've acquired an object-oriented database from Objectivity, which is Digital's ODB. I know there are some internal engineers putting an ATIS interface on ODB to see what the performance is of that, for example. Uh, we will integrate ODB with the overall distributed database system that's being implemented that we refer to as information network. And uh, all of that is a key component of, of this repository. So it's going to be there. The other question, uh, if everybody writes these NAS uh, applications with these standard APIs, then <coughs> who writes and owns and licenses the NAS libraries on these different platforms? And, you know, am I phrasing my question that makes, in a way that makes sense? In other words, let's say you, you want to write an API application that runs under DOS, okay, under, and that's middleware. Underneath that, it's got to be DOS libraries that actually uh, carry out the requests of those APIs over a distributed network. I mean, that's does, what does typically the ISV himself also write that and that becomes kind of like a de facto standard? Or? 
you understand my question? I think so. That, that's the point I was trying to make, make with the base services. <coughs> that we, in many cases, will need to fill the gap between what a particular platform is able to do and what the NAS APIs require so through the these space services. If he wants to do that, he typically does that himself. Right. We would not expect the ISV to do that. If I understood your question right. as we can see, a repository today is a specialized database with services for version and configuration, workflow. And by the way, one reason I wanted to bring this up is if you can think of any other generic attributes beyond this one, I would be interested in hearing from you. Function invocation, dependency management, traceability and correspondence management, context, extensibility management. And then you have probably multiple interfaces to it. You have ATIS, you have PDS Express, you have CDD Plus, other interfaces. Management services was another of the categories of services, <coughs> heavy emphasis on EMA, which is our enterprise management architecture, security, authorization services, authentication, encryption, and so forth fall in this category, and various reliability services fall in the management services. Under control, application invocation, automatic distribution, extended transaction, flow management, job scheduling, object management, threads, Applications. Okay. One minute left. The uh, key NAS users that we're addressing through NAS are really all the four users of the system. The end user, system manager, system integrator, and the application developer. System manager, addressing here the multi-vendor computing environment, which is probably one of the toughest tasks I'm sure that we're addressing, is being able to manage a network of multi-vendor equipment from one place coherently. System integrator, customizes, refine, integrates, extends, modifies, and tests the applications. This includes our own EIS as well as third parties. And user obviously has a easier way with NAS to share data with other users and have access to data as like they haven't had before. The major uh, NAS benefits, it really is to protect the application software investment in many dimensions. Now, one of them that I want to point out and that we're hearing more and more about is what do we do with existing systems, <coughs> the legacy systems? And we don't replace it. That's not the first strategy. The first strategy is to integrate it up into our open NAS environment to have the coexistence and interoperability with those software systems and hardware systems. Flexibility comes through the open systems and standards. Our commitment to standards, yes, we are constantly adding new capability that you need. But we, you can also rest assured that most of those capabilities will, in one form or another, go into standards. Simplify the application development. Again, this becomes 
comes from the great comprehensive set of services that we actually are providing on these platforms. MIS will have a greater flexibility to buy and deploy computing systems. We will obviously have a goal to make NAS work the best on our platforms, software and operating systems, but should the customer for some reason have a need to have some other software or hardware, we will support that also. I talked to one large customer in the South, an oil company the other day. They had certain policies such as SAA and MVS for certain mainframe systems, but they, after talking to them in more detail than I am about NAS, they were still very interested about NAS being kind of the overall umbrella that included that host that worked with SAA but in addition to that, provided some other capabilities. So the NAS message, the NAS story, sold quite well, even to that kind of an environment. Also, the various services within NAS are not necessarily restricted to digital-only software. In, within NAS, we also have standards that we support, for example, in the database side, and having had the, still do, the database group reporting to me, I hate saying this, but if a third party, like an Oracle, wants to be part of NAS, they can be. If a customer has as a policy they're going to use Oracle, we're not going to lock out that third party from being part of, part of NAS. The standards are there. They have certain requirements to fill in order to be part of NAS, but they can if they want to. And obviously, our database people will have as a goal to have, make sure that our database system, when it's on Altrix and certainly on VMS, will work better than, than Oracle does for <coughs> systems or even other platforms. We believe that NAS gives the, an opportunity to introduce new technology. It actually gives a strategy and a mechanism for adding new technology onto, on top of the existing computer systems that are there today. And as I said earlier, we have 1,200 applications today. We expect that to become much larger in the future. Another part that's very important with this uh, NAS story and I said earlier, we're going to get the information out to you. We've also in encountered a big need from, very l from the large customers today to know where we're going in the next three to five years. And what I've showed you here is the three to five year end goal when we have all the services in place. I hope you realize that. But our customers today are saying we're making strategic decisions, I think more today than at any other time, for the 90s. We don't necessarily want everything that you're going to do in the next five years today, but we want to know where you're going. We want to know if, and I'll take the distributed, the, the database case, is relational going to be real in five years, or is it all object-oriented? How real is a distributed database? How real is system management of heterogeneous systems? Should I count on having cost-effective multimedia systems in two years? They're asking us questions today that we don't cover with PIDs. And I was in a uh, workstation sales manager training the other week, and they got all excited because they all decided to throw out all the PIDs. PIDs were really bad. They wanted information, and they wanted information for the next three to five years so that they can compete with everybody else that's selling three to five years information. And uh, we need to find a way, and we will find a way to get this information out to the field so that we can educate them, educate prospects about the directions we're going without giving away too much so it could be reverse engineered by somebody. But I think this is a pretty good uh, picture that we should take advantage of today to improve our business. This, there are NAS pits today, but, no. Oh. Um, well, this information is happening right now, so what I took here with me is a couple of weeks old. We've, our people are generating it. As I said, we're going to have a rollout within engineering of NAS at the end of March, so we haven't even told all of our engineers yet in terms of the application architecture. But in the new spirit of getting information out, I wanted to give it to you. One thing that's not on here is the word open, and one 
one of the fixes we're going to have is open. This is open systems. And uh, it was a Skip Garvin. I don't know not many of you may, may know him. He was in the US, and he left and went to Europe two, three years ago. And he gave a presentation at this uh, same sales training that I went to. And I was very impressed by his definition of open. He's the one that, uh, well, he was giving a, a, a sales lesson 101 on how to sell systems, such as starting with a blank sheet of paper and asking the customer what they want instead of throwing hardware at them, which many of them agree that they were doing today. And he went through the scenario of the open system. The customer will say, what's an open system? I want an open system. And many of them will say, then you will ask, what is an open system? And he may say, or the customer, she may say, it's Unix. And then you do Unix. Well, they may say, it's standards and POSIX. And then you say, well, standards and POSIX, here's VMS, open VMS, or Unix, depending upon your other requirements. Some customers will say, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm just, somebody told me I ought to buy an open system, and I'm going to buy an open system. You tell me what it is. And then uh, quickly you're going to discover, he said, that they have existing systems in there today. They have legacy systems. So you sit down and you design an open system with a customer that includes those existing legacy systems, that includes standards. And if they want some Altrix, some BMS, some MS-DOS, but this point was that a true open system is unique for each customer. You design it with a customer. But it's open in the sense that it allows for standards and it allows for the existing investment that the customer has made. That impressed me. I thought that was pretty good. So I'm going to make sure that this open message gets into this mass presentation. So I said it earlier, I think multi-vendor, it's interoperability distributability and our commitment to portability. We're hard at work in porting this stuff, not only to Altrix, but to, to other platforms. And I extended my time. I have time for probably a question or two, maybe. A question or two? We've been following NAS for a while now. You said we're going to roll it out in engineering. What happened? I'll give you the history of it was that uh, David Stone came in, some of his people, I'm one of them, and he decided, well, I'm going to fix this software thing. I'm going to make sure it's portable. We're going to cut out the strategic part in terms of concentrating on that. We're going to fix all these other uh, integration issues that we've had. It's all going to work together. It's going to be quality. And in order to make that happen, you have to have an architecture around it. We didn't want to do an architecture where you have to start all over again. We want to take advantage of a lot of the investment that we had done. And we started that activity, and that got going in, in strong effort. And it was referred to as CORE, the Common Repository Environment. And that was going to be the word for all of that. Then we had a uh, press briefing at, uh, regarding uh, information network and some of the stuff that we were going to do to the press in December. I think it was December 5th. And prior to that, I and some others went to various consultants. And I was at Gartner. And I gave the press briefing information that included David Stone's speech at the press briefing. And the Gartner person said, what's this core stuff? So I explained that to the person. He said, well, there's not room for NAS or core. You talked about NAS, now you have core. There's only one. So if it's core, then NAS is dead. So on the spot, this I realized the engineering mistake we had made again, which was to reinvent something very different. So core died on the spot, the name core. Because NAS, the messages around NAS, were exa exactly the ones that we were trying to, to come up with. It was portability, interoperability, distributability. And there was no reason to reinvent a new name. The point being, though, is that this is 10 times bigger than what old NAS was in terms of number of services and the effort involved. And it is all of software engineering at digital except, and we're working on those, the, the operating systems and networking people. And it's all around these principles and it's NAS. <coughs> Some people, you'll see the word extended NAS. Sometimes you'll see the word NAS core, but we try to wipe out the word core. So this is new NAS, extended NAS on the same principles. Don't use new NAS, that's the wrong one. But it's, uh, everything we've done so far on NAS is in total support of that. And uh, we're going to take it on from 
and carry it on from here. Yep. Uh, one of the things that doesn't seem to be addressed to what just said, the circle is you can say, typically we know where our people are now, so it's simple as though we're going to be in this environment and running RMS, time sharing, uh, probably character cell terminals. It's not the least bit good or day how someone migrates to this new world, but the tools we have to ACMS, RGB, Echoes, environment, outside is totally scrapping the application and starting on the what, what tools do we have to help get the RMS to RGB and go from a time sharing to ACMS? Wow. I think one of the messages would be that you wouldn't necessarily have to change what you have today. You would work with the other NAS capabilities that you that were introduced here. So if you write a new application, you may want to use the new capabilities of databases and so forth. If the customer still wants to move from RMS to RDB, there are tools provided by third parties for sure. And I'm, I'm, I think there's some stuff that's coming up from us too, yeah, that, that will allow that to happen. But uh, one of the things you want to be careful with with this NAS picture, and I tried to stress it by saying interoperable with the existing environment, is not to force a migration or a conversion of any kind from the existing software, whether it's somebody else's or ours, to this particular environment. That should be done by the customer deciding that it's to his or her benefit to do so from a cost performance standpoint. I didn't give you a good answer. Question around here, uh, I'm not sure whether I've got this quite straight. Uh, are we going to be supplying the software to run on other people's hardware? Is that the point you made? Yeah. Now, how wide a range of other people's hardware would that be? I had this slide earlier. Um, most probably it would include Sun, um, HP, MBS. Now, there are two ways of doing it. Uh, one is uh, we decide that we're going to do it ourselves through our own channels. Uh, another one is to, to do it through third parties. And uh, when you have two situations like that, typically the real truth will be you, that we'll do both. Um, ODB, for example, the one required from Objectivity, the same database system is being released on VMS, Ultrix, and Sun, and the third party is providing the Sun delivery. So there's an example of a third party doing the, the uh, delivery on other people's platforms. But I would, I would envision that we would actually ourselves, through whatever <coughs> channel, I'm not sure yet, maybe some of it will be the direct sales channel, actually deliver NAS packages on other people's platforms. One of the reasons for doing that is if you're going to have a distributed system that you're going to be able to manage, it may be a requirement that some of this management software definitely will be on other people's platforms so that you can have a chance to have some sort of consistent system management services across the heterogeneous nodes of a network. I, I wanted to give you as much as I had up to date Believe me, you got the up-to-date story on this part. And uh, I'll make sure that the information comes out to you in one form or the other, not just you, but everybody that needs to know it in the field and corporate engineering, what have you. Thank you.